All right, let's talk about doing arithmetic on functions. All right, so this is going to involve adding functions, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Uh, obviously, if we can do it to uh, plain old numbers, then we should be able to do it to functions as well. And you guys, it's going to boil down to doing that arithmetic on just numbers. All right, so uh, let's go through a little bit of the math uh, textbook definitions here. So given two functions, f and g, all right, then Basically, any time we plug in an x, we get a y, right? We get a function value. And we can add those function values, we can subtract them, we can multiply them, and we can divide them. And what I want you to pay attention to, and I'm just going to go ahead and put up all the arithmetic here and, uh, and grab my pen. The biggest thing that you guys need to do uh, as students is you need to understand that this horrible notation right here with the f plus g in parentheses and a parentheses x that that is just telling you to add f and g at x okay so this is what the homework is going to look like uh, this certainly uh, the notation I will use on the exam and so what you need to learn is just that hey that's just telling you to add your functions f and g at x Similarly, this terrible notation is just telling you to subtract f and g at x. Likewise, multiply f and g at x and divide f and g at x. Okay, so make sure that you can read the notation on the left of those equal signs and recognize that it is just telling you to do the easy math that's on the right of the equal sign. All right, so let's go through a few examples. Let's let f of x equal x squared minus 2 and g of x equal 3x plus 5. Let's find f plus g of x. All right, so note the difference in what I'm saying, um, how I'm reading it. f plus g of x is the same thing as f of x plus g of x. Okay, so I can kind of move that plus around in my sentence. Okay, so, well, here, guys, we just want to add f and g, all right? So let's substitute what f and g are, all right? And since there's a plus sign in between those parentheses, I can just remove the parentheses and combine my like terms, all right? This is a new function I have from combining f and g under addition, all right? And let's take a look, all right? So before you go, holy cow, what did she just show us? Okay, f is the blue function, that's f of x, and g of x is the line or the red function, all right? And what we're doing it by creating this new function is we're creating this black function, all right? Is it something that you could do on your own, or was this Angie math magic? Well, it's absolutely not magic at all. In, in fact, in my opinion, no part of math is magic, but... Let me show you how easy it is to get this point 1, 8, okay? I told you that arithmetic of functions just boils down to arithmetic of numbers, okay? So let's plug in 1 into our function, okay? Well, for f, when I plug in 1, I get negative 1, all right? And when I plug in one into my g function, I get one eight. All right, so again, I plug in one into f and I get negative one. I plug one into g and I get eight. And when I add those two numbers, eight plus negative one, what do we get, guys? Exactly, we get seven, which is right here on our black function, which we're expecting. All right, so again, the arithmetic of functions just boils down to the arithmetic of range values, which is just real numbers. All right, so let's talk about the second part of this problem where we're wanting to find f plus g of 1. Obviously, we already know the answer 7, uh, but like I've told you many times, we learn math by sometimes starting with the answer and going backwards. So let me show you two ways other than the graph that we could go about getting our answer of 7. All right, well, recall we just created this new function by adding f and g, all right, keeping it in terms of x. So we have our new function x squared plus 3x plus 3. I want to know the function value at 1, so what can I do, guys? I can just plug in 1, 
And you see that if I take 1 into my new function, square it, plus 3 times 1 plus 3, I get 7, which is exactly what our graph said we should get. All right, is there another way to do it? Of course there is. All right, what if I didn't want to combine f and g under x? Okay, meaning what if I didn't want to create, what if I did not want to create this new function here? Could I just plug 1 into f and 1 into g and add them? Absolutely. That algebra is what we just did looking at our graph. So as you can see here, I'm plugging 1 into f, and I get 1 squared minus 2, which is negative 1. And I'm plugging 1 into g, 3 times 1 plus 5, which is 8. And then I can simply add negative 1 and 8 and get 7. All right. Again, this algebra right here is exactly what we did with this graph in getting 7. We added 8 and negative 1. All right, let's look at subtraction. So we have our same functions. All right, let's find f minus g of x. Again, that's just f of x minus g of x. All right, so I'm substituting in f and g. But now I have a minus in front of that second parentheses. All right, and guys, please note that I used parentheses when substituting in my functions because that minus has to hit every single term in g. That 3x has to become negative and that 5 has to become negative. And when that 5 becomes negative and I combine it with negative 2, I get that constant term of negative 7. Okay, so again, let's take a look at our graph. All right, again, blue is our f of x and red is our g of x. And we are creating the black function again. All right, so let's take a look here at negative 1. All right, so in here, since it's subtraction, order matters. All right, so I start with my f. I plug negative 1 into f, and I get negative 1. All right, I plug negative 1 into g, and I get 2. All right. Well, what is negative 1 minus 2? Exactly. It's negative 3, which is right here on our um, h of x or black graph or our new function. All right, let's actually do the algebra. Let's see if it, it holds up. All right, again, we have our new function that we just found under subtraction. I can certainly plug negative 1 into that function. And like magic, I get negative 3, which agrees with my graph. All right. On the flip side, if I didn't want to go through the trouble of finding the new function, I could just plug negative 1 into f and get negative 1, just like my graph said. I can plug negative 1 into g and get 2, again, just like the graph said. And then I can subtract those two numbers and get my negative 3, which is what I'm expecting. All right. What about multiplication? Do you think it's the same? Of course it's the same. All right. And so, again, let's since we want f times g of x, that's just f of x, our function, times our other function, g of x. All right, what are we going to have to do here when we're multiplying two parentheses? Exactly, we're going to have to FOIL. All right, and so I FOIL these two parentheses, and I don't have any like terms I can combine. All right, and I'm going to take a look at my new graph. All right, so again, blue is our f red is our g, and when I multiply these two functions, I'm getting this new black graph. All right, do you really think it's arbitrary, the shape or every, anything? Absolutely not. We're just multiplying range values. That is all we're doing. All right, for example, all right, again, let's look at 1. I plug 1 into f, and I get negative 1. I plug 1 into g, and I get 8. I multiply these two numbers, and what do I get? Negative 8 which is the range value I see on my black graph at 1. All right, so let's actually go through the algebra again of f times g at 1. I can take my new function that I found under multiplication. I can, I can plug in 1, all right? I plug in 1 and get negative 8, which is exactly what my graph told me I should get. Or I could plug 1 individually into f and g, getting my range values negative 1 and 8, and then multiply those two numbers to get negative 8. All right, so again, two ways to get to your answer here, guys. All right, lastly, let's look at division. 
all right? So sticking with the same old functions, we want to divide f over g, all right? Well, that's just f of x divided by g of x. So I just stick f in the numerator. I stick g in the denominator. Is there any way I can simplify? Absolutely not, all right? That is in simplified form. And so we have our graph, all right? Again, blue is our f of x function. Red is our g of x. And this crazy black function here, which is rational, is going to be our new h of x function, all right? Don't get too concerned with how crazy it looks. Just keep in mind the way it gets created is by dividing range values. Once again, let's take a look at the domain value 1. I plug 1 into f and get negative 1. I plug 1 into g and get 8. I divide negative 1 over 8, and what do I get? Negative 1 over 8, which is exactly what I see here on, on the black graph. All right, let's do the algebra. Again, I have a new function that I've created by dividing f and g. I can plug 1 into that function and get my negative 1 over 8. All right, or I could plug 1 in individually, plug 1 into f, plug 1 into g, divide those two range values, and get my negative 1 over 8. All right, so hopefully at this point you guys are pretty comfortable with adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing functions. All right, this is just a little table to talk to you about domain. All right, so what I want you to see is that if we have a function that has a restricted domain, then that restricted domain dominates our addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. All right, so notice here that f of x is just a line here. All right, and so it has a domain of everything, negative infinity to infinity. G of x, on the other hand, is a radical. All right, and how do we go about getting the domain for this radical? Keep in mind that what we're doing is we are solving the inequality 2x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. When we solve that inequality, we get x has to be greater than or equal to 1 half. All right, so x has to be greater than or equal to 1 half, and that is what this interval is telling us, greater than or equal to 1 half. All right, so under addition, subtraction, and multiplication, that will be our domain. Okay, there's really no more work we need to do once we have the domain for g. All right, it's restricted, so it dominates the domain for addition, subtraction, multiplication. But notice division is a little bit different. Uh, notice here that the bracket has changed to a parentheses. Why do you think that is? Well, now that radical is in the denominator. Okay, and so we solved the inequality that x could be that x had to be greater than or equal to 1 half. But what happens if we plug in 1 half? Well, we get the square root of 0, which is 0. And how many times in our life can we divide by 0? None. All right? So we have to exclude that bracket. We have to exclude the number 1 half in this final um, division domain right here. Okay? All right. Let's also uh, go through one more time using a graph to determine function combinations. Meaning, what if I were to give you two functions um, on a graph, but I don't actually give you the expression? I just give you a few uh, points along the function like I have in this picture. Well, what would be f plus g of 4? Well, again, guys, that's just f of 4 plus g of 4. f of 4 is 9. g of 4 is 2. And I'm certain that every single one of you, without any blink of an eye, can add 9 and 2 to get 11. All right? Similarly, what's f minus g of 1? Well, f of 1 is 3, g of 1 is 1, and what's 3 minus 1? 2. All right? f times g is 0. Well, f of 0, that's our blue function, is 1. g of 0 is the origin. And what is 1 times 0? Yep, just 0. All right, last one. Let's divide at 4. So f of 4 divided by g of 4 is just 9 divided by 2. Again, just looking at those range values. 